Hey, how's it going everyone? I'm Nathan with the ebookreader.com. For this video, I'm gonna give you guys a review of the new Kobo Libra 2. Uh, so on paper, it doesn't look like a whole lot has changed from the first gen model. They added uh, more storage space. You got dark mode now officially, uh, and it's got a USB-C port, but a lot of the features are still the same. You still have the same seven inch ink screen. This model adds audiobook support and they uh, tweak the design a little bit. It's got kind of a different flair to the side now uh, and the buttons have been moved over closer to the edge. I do find them comfortable to use. They got a good tactile response. The back has a little bit of texture so it's not slick at all. It doesn't uh, feel like it's going to slip out of your hand at all like some e-readers do. And like I said, you got the USB-C port here on the side. So this model has a rotation sensor. You can switch between left-handed and right-handed and it will also switch to landscape mode. So if you wanted to read it like this, uh, that's an option as well. As you can see with this model, it has the indented screen, which I actually think helps make the screen look a little bit better, has a little bit better contrast. Um, one thing you will notice, it does kind of have a black edge uh, at the edge of the screen underneath the bezel. Kind of notice that when you look down the edge, but it doesn't bother anything. So this model has the front light with adjustable color temperature, and I think the front light is absolutely great on this one. It's probably the best front light I've ever seen on a Kobo. Very even, um, and you've got the orange color if you wanted to get the orange color for night, and you can kind of blend the two. Uh, it kind of depends on what brightness level you have. The color uh, at lower brightness levels, the orange is a little bit less apparent. Um, so let's switch over to, I'll turn the overhead lighting off here so you can get a different idea of the uh, front light. See, it's a little bit darker when you have the uh, light like this. Um, so you can adjust it however you'd like. You can also swipe up and down the left side of the screen to adjust the brightness. Uh, so yeah, I think the front light looks great and the screen in general looks great. Here it is, a quick comparison with the larger Kobo Sage that was released at the same time. Um, it's more expensive, but I still think the uh, Libra, in fact, has a slightly better screen here, even at... Uh, full brightness with the uh, front light on here. It just seems to have a little bit more pop to the text. Uh, they did increase the uh, contrast with this uh, screen. It's the Carta 1200 screen, so it's supposed to have a little bit better contrast. But the Forma has the flush front screen, and that always seems to degrade the clarity of the ink screen just a little bit. Uh, I don't notice as much of a difference with the front light turned off, but it does seem like the text is just a little bit darker on the Libra uh, with that indented screen without the extra layers. All right, so let's move on to some of the other features now. So it does have the page buttons. If you hold them down, you can scan through the pages. Um, and if you can also turn the page, obviously, by using the touch screen, if you wanted to touch the screen as well, you can use swiping or tapping. Uh, and another thing in the settings here is you can invert the button. So by default, the top button is the back button and the bottom button is the go forward button, but uh, you can invert those in the settings here. So you have some different settings in the reading settings menu here. They have headers and footers on the Kobo, like as it displays your book, you can turn those on and off. You have some different options for displaying this percentage red. Uh, and they did add dark mode to the new models now, so it's an official feature. It has the waveforms to support that. So uh, a ghosting is much better than it was on previous models where you would have to hack this on there. Uh, so you don't have much ghosting. It doesn't have uh, the after image effects that the other models did. So it actually works a lot better. So one thing you will notice is when you use dark mode, everything else is still uh, light mode. So like your dictionary prompt, your menus, like all your library and everything is still gonna be in regular. And it doesn't invert images either, so that's kind of nice. Uh, you can also use the buttons to scroll like when you're viewing your library list. So you got some different views on the home screen here. You got your dedicated home layout. Uh, it will show some of your recent red titles and some recommendation stuff at the bottom. Uh, that kind of rotates and then you've got your main library view you got some different ways to view your content you know you can sort by author series collections you can create collections on here use caliber to create collections uh, i was never into it myself because it just takes time but you got the different sorting options as well and your um, different filters so you do got some different layout options for your home screen you can also switch it over to cover view uh, we got a few different features over in the uh, more tab here. So you have like a wish list in my articles that you can use pocket to download your articles. So you got a web browser, large print mode. For some reason, the beta feature list is always different, different models. Some models have a bunch of games. I don't know why they're not available in this one, but um, you got this uh, discover tab will take you to the Kobo ebook store. So uh, they also have audiobooks available now. That's one of the main new features with this uh, device, even though I don't think anybody really cares about it. You can uh, get audiobooks on here now. That's what the uh, 32 gigabytes of storage space helps with because uh, they do take up a fair amount of space. You're going to need to use Bluetooth uh, for that. And another great feature about Kobo's is how easy they make it to get library books. So you got Overdrive in here. You can sign in with your library card or your Overdrive account. And then you can download a bunch of ebooks for free. So it works quite well. I do like having that option on here. Uh, you might also notice this little uh, line on the right so you can jump around, uh, scroll to different pages using that in addition to using your 
uh, page buttons, or you can just scroll manually up and down the list. Uh, and you can also use the arrows to go page by page as well. So that was something Kobo added a little bit while back. But I mean, so far for the features on this device, they haven't really changed anything um, as far as the software goes. It's still the same as you would have on earlier devices for the most part. I think the one difference would be the audiobook player. So uh, not a whole lot of difference here uh, as far as the software goes with the new model. It mostly just comes with the hardware upgrades, uh, a lot of the navigation, you know, all your... Uh, main ebook features are still going to be the same you got your table of contents view you got your annotations list so the one thing with kobo is you still don't have any way to export those annotations but you can jump around to those different parts in your book uh, you got the different font options so you can uh, turn justification on and off left or right uh, and you've got the different font line spacing margins you know all the usual stuff in here Kobo has a good selection of fonts um, built in here. You can also sideload fonts on Kobo devices, so you can add them to a font folder and then you can use your own fonts. Um, I don't think they have the option to customize the boldness though, unless you use a patch. Uh, but with the system fonts, you can go and customize the boldness of the font. There are a couple other options up here on the menu for some different features. So they do have this like estimated reading timer that'll pop up and it'll kind of give you an estimate of how uh, long you've got in the chapter and in the book. It's kind of a cool feature. Only works with Kobo's books though, not side-loaded books. Um, again, like I said, with the uh, with the fonts here, you got some different options. So if you're using the publisher font or a side-loaded font, you don't have this advanced menu. When you're using Kobo's fonts, you can come in here, increase the weight, and you can kind of see a comparison window here of the previous and uh, current setting so you can get an idea of how it's going to change the only thing I don't like about that is there isn't a revert so you don't know how to get back to the exact same setting you had before um, like after you've changed it so they had a revert but only like in that exact instance uh, again you can uh, control the front light by swiping up and down the left side of the screen so that makes it nice and easy when you're reading I wish all e-readers had that um, it's definitely better than going in here to the menu so uh, you've got that natural light and you can have it automatically adjust as the day goes on just by setting your bedtime setting and it'll get gradually warmer as the night goes on so uh, it's a really good feature actually I never really cared for this in the past but um, it does look really good at night when you use the, the orange setting it doesn't even look orange when you're using it at night it's kind of weird but it really makes the text pop um, so here's a quick look at the audiobook player. You do need to use Bluetooth for audiobooks, uh, headphones, or speakers because it doesn't have any built-in speakers. So you got some different settings in here. You got speed settings. Also has that little estimated uh, reading thing going on as well. And you got the obviously typical stuff like volume adjustment. Uh, you can jump to the different chapters in your audiobook. This is one of their free pe previews they had available in their store. So. Uh, just another quick look with the Kobo uh, Sage. The Kobo Sage has an upgraded quad-core CPU, but when it comes to page turns, I don't really notice any difference. Uh, there are other times, though, when the uh, Sage is quicker with that processor, loading stuff up. Uh, it's a bit zippier. The touchscreen just feels a little bit more responsive as well, like when you're typing on the keyboard. But I'll do a, an in-depth uh, comparison between these guys later. I just wanted to kind of show a quick look at these two, just a little bit quick difference in the performance and a little bit difference with the screens. Um, so the Kindle Voyage is kind of the gold standard when it comes to contrast. This is a quick look at the Kindle Voyage. Uh, so I still think it has the edge when you're checking them out here with the uh, front light turned off. It has a lighter background. When you turn the front light on, it's a little bit less apparent. Um, but yeah, I think the contrast is really, really good on the Libra 2. It's one of the best. Uh, it's a nice device, really nice front light on the screen. I do kind of like with this white model as well. It comes in white and black. Uh, with the white, it kind of blends in with the back of the screen with the front light on. It kind of has a cool look to it. So uh, I think this is a really nice device uh, for the price. My one complaint is it's just a little bit on the heavy and bulky side. It's kind of thick on that right edge, but it's not a big deal, really. Uh, I do, like I said, really like the screen. So it just kind of comes down to your own personal preferences. It doesn't have stylus support. And it doesn't have that quad-core CPU like the Kobo Sage. So it comes with uh, fewer or less features, but when it comes to the reading experience, it is quite good. So uh, check out theebookreader.com for the full review. Bye.